guys welcome back to my channel so i just finished watching episode three of hawkeye my reaction will be under my youtube memberships if you are new here and you do not know what that is it's a few special perks for members only for those of you who are already members i appreciate you all i really appreciate you guys sticking around and um supporting me in this way it really helps you guys have no idea how much it means to me for those of you who are new here i encourage you to go over there i've got two levels of memberships over there I didn't do live streams, but that is part of my membership packages. Um, this year, I do plan on doing um, live streams for members only. So hopefully those of you who are members, um, you get to have, you know, these live streams with me uh, privately if you are a member. Uh, level 1 is for $2.99 and you get priority replies from me, special polls and live streams. Level 2 is for $4.99 and you get everything that Level 1 has plus you get all of my reactions to all of the shows I watch, any movies I watch, and all of my uncut Try Not To Laughs. So make sure you go and check that out because that is the only way that you'll see my reaction to all of the shows that I watch is to become a member. So with that being said, you guys, I wanted to jump into Hawkeye because I started watching Echo and a couple of you guys, um, a couple of you guys made it a note to let me know that some of the things that I was seeing in Echo are in Hawkeye. Some of the images that Maya sees and in turn, I'll learn a little bit more and understand Echo more. So I'll say, you know what, let me go ahead and watch, um, hawkeye and then i'll go back and watch echo right now i think i've got three to five left i think i watched the first two um episodes of echo the episode two of hawkeye introduced maya which i was like okay let me watch um the third episode of uh hawkeye and then i'll jump back into echo and finish watching echo and then i'll finish watching hawkeye so episode three we saw um, well, I saw very familiar scenes as I have already seen them in Echo. Her as a little girl, she's in the classroom. She's trying to read her teacher's lips. Her teacher doesn't seem to know that she's deaf at the time. Um, they were doing classwork and when she thought that she needed an interpreter, she looked down and Maya's work was done. Um, so then it also showed her being at the, um, at the, uh, at the center um practicing her fighting and things like that and we see her father you know her in the bedroom talking to her dad just like we saw an echo um then you know she's she's at her practice and she's talking to her dad and just like we saw an echo um this time around you know we saw her walking up to the kid the kid notices her leg he's just like mm, okay i don't know how this is gonna work but you know, he's kind of teaching her that it's more about how fast you are, not what you can do. I believe that's what he said. So then she said, when you're done, uncle will get take you home. And of course, uncle is Kingpin. Um, so then we saw when he went to go grab her cheek and we saw that in Echo. And now I'm starting to piece things together. So then as she got older, we see her going to the garage. She sees her dad getting killed by Ronan and... It clicked to me after I saw Echo, but now it makes more sense as to why she wants Clint. Well, no, why she wants the person who's in the suit because she doesn't know that Clint is Ronan. So um, we see that happening just like we saw in Echo. Um, and now we're back to uh, Kate and Clint being tied up to these kitty toys. And she notices that Clint has in uh, a hearing aid. So she assumes that he's deaf. But he's like, no, I'm not deaf. I'm just hard of hearing. So they're going back and forth. She's the boss of all of the, the tracksuit guys who's after Kate and Clint. And long story short, a big part of this episode was them getting away and out of this warehouse. The chases were absolutely insane. I absolutely loved when they were on going on this chase, they stole the car, they went, they were being chased after Maya and her crew. And I loved when Kate went ahead and as Clint was driving, she's throwing all these arrows and you see all these different arrows that he has. And it's like one of them was goop. Another one was a plunger arrow. 
another one was i don't know purple smoke another one th they were just running into so many problems and they got to the bridge and the dopest part for me was when he told kate point this one in the air and i got you from here and he turned that arrow into what looked like a humongous missile that sucker was crazy absolutely crazy i think that was probably one of my favorite parts um in this episode it was really really cool i liked the way that they began to communicate like it was times where she forgot that his hearing aid was broken because maya stepped on it when they were fighting and um you know they they went ahead and they went off they ended up on the train so she ended up getting his hearing aid fixed and now they're sitting at a diner and she's talking to him basically telling him like he needs a suit and he's trying to explain to her i don't need a suit i'm trying to lay low he's trying to explain to her that that suit um you know it, it's just not a good thing he's trying to explain to her how the life that she's trying to live comes with a lot of sacrifices a lot of losses and what's what's funny is that before when they were in the warehouse um black widow was mentioned by one of the tracksuit guys and so it was a conversation that we're having where clint was there supposedly clint was there and the only person that knows who ronin is is dead and now ronin is dead too so nobody knows nothing about ronin which bothers him to this day clearly because he was there he watched her die so she's gone um and he's been messed up ever since so now his hearing aid is smashed up they end up going over to i think her place the place that they were staying at and it was such a sentimental situation where his son called and he couldn't hear but she was helping him have this conversation with his son and his son obviously didn't know that he couldn't hear him but towards the end of the conversation he started to get teary-eyed because he's like i'm you know i'm so glad to hear your voice knowing that he can't hear him and his son wants him to be home and his son seems to be disappointed because he's not home and he wants him to make it home for movie night. And you can see Kate getting all teary eyed and it was such like a soft moment and it was so cool to kind of just see him in that light. And it, it was, it was really sad. It was really sad. Like I felt for him in that moment. So then now they get his hearing aid fixed. They're sitting at a diner and they're having this conversation and she's like, mm, you got to keep Ronin close because you can't let people know. And she, I think at some point she may figure it out. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm watching this for myself, so we'll see. Um, but I think at some point she's going to find out about him. Um, so now, at the end of this episode, they end up going to her mom's house. So now we've switched gears from that whole situation with Maya to her mother's boyfriend, this dude, who I cannot stay from the very beginning that he has stepped foot in the scene of this season and this ep th this whole show i cannot stand this dude jack okay i can't he irritates me um and he's no good at all he's no good so we all know that he stole the sword that was being sold at this auction and that was ronin's sword so they're in this house and she's trying to figure things out. She needs his help trying to figure out how she can take him down as being a murderer, what she can, can get on him. So now that he can hear, they're in her house and he's looking around. He's like, oh shoot, I thought that he was going to run into the sword. He did, but not by mistake. He heard something in the house. He was walking towards the noise. This dude comes out of the corner and literally stops him with his own sword and tells him not to move and that's where the episode ended and i'm like oh buddy now i can only imagine what's gonna happen because he's going to realize that that sword is his he's going to realize that that is ronin's sword and now i'm interested to know what's gonna happen next whether he's gonna get into a fight with him whether he's going to take the sword back whether that's going to uh make him want to 
revive Ronan again? You know, I don't know. I have to check the next episode. But leave your comments down below if you have seen Hawkeye. I'm sure a lot of you have. I'm late to the game, but I chose to watch it because I'm watching Echo. Let me know if you enjoyed this episode, episode three of um, Hawkeye, where they were going back and forth with Maya. Maya was introduced and the whole team is just going at it at this point. Like I said, I think one of my favorite parts in this uh, episode was when he turned that arrow into like a humongous looking missile type of arrow. Um, I think that was absolutely cool. But um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off of Hawkeye to finish Echo. And then I'm going to jump back and finish Hawkeye because I actually just want to get Echo out of the way. Um, now that I see her going after Clint and wanting to go after Ronan, um, she almost choked out Kate thinking that she was it. Um, but then they escaped. So, um, but yeah, let me know your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed my review and if you haven't done so, subscribe to my channel, hit like, share, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you guys can get notified whenever I pop up on your feed. I'll see you guys later. Toodles!